I was young, I, I had a book I, I worshipped. It was an old book by Isaac Walton called The Complete Angler. It was like a romantic nature Bible to me. The first time I heard anything was himself talking in Cannes, talking about, and I thought he was making a joke. He talked to, we were doing an interview with Kirsten Dunst, and so for Melancholia. And, um, and he said, my next film is a porn film with those two. I knew that he was making a movie. You always hear about things like that. You know who your favorite guys are and what they're doing. But I didn't know specifically what it was. Can we talk about it? Of course. But I just got a call um, from my agent saying, there's, there's, there may be an opportunity here uh, in this Lars von Schur movie. And I already knew what it was. And uh, I said, yeah, anything, man, any role, whatever. That was my response to my agent. And the first info we got, <laughs> And I'll never forget this, because my entire team reacted with such a fear, you know. Uh, my first, the first request on their, on the production end, not from Lars, but from production, was pictures of my penis. And Lars goes, all right, well, send him the letter. And the letter was, you know, are you game? And so I guess the first test was, let's time how long it takes for this motherfucker to send his dick over the internet, you know, and it was like, 20 minutes, you know? So they were like, all right, kids, ready. Go for the pleasure first, always. Yeah, I just thought it was a joke. And that he was, a, it was a provocation. The big thing for me was for him that, that I was realizing that he was asking me to do a third film. And it was such a blessing. I couldn't expect what I was going to read so it was all a surprise and yes of course quite terrifying it was such a rich script and so so intense for me it was majorly powerful you know hearing stuff about lust plus jealousy equals love was probably the most definitive description of love up to that point in my life i'd ever really heard just the easiest simplest most matter of fact way and it connected with me and that scared the shit out of me you know, there's a translation thing too, because he writes, he doesn't write in English. It's gotta be translated. And so there's things that get lost in translation, you know? Uh, jokes that didn't make sense to me when I read them, where on the day, situationally, it all works. I don't think I understood all of it. I had no idea about the numbers, the numerology, the golden angles and all this shit, I had no idea. The form of the film, that it, it is basically it is two people sitting in a room for five hours talking, <laughs> but with backflashes and, and, and cuts of, of other locations as well, and mixed up with, with Lars's very humoristic way of making his own comments visually uh, on everything. When I saw his first film, Element of Crime, in a festival, I said, I'd like to work with this director when he gets interested in people. Uh, and it took him some years, but then he realized it himself, and he with the kingdom, he's, he sort of broke up this total control thing and realized that he could actually have, uh, get real life on the screen if he let the actors go. I just expected more information, more input, more direction. I just expected a lot of directing. No. And I just ran into a collaborator uh, who respected my opinion. One of the things I realized with Lars is that all the actors that he's worked with, I think he knows that he, they will bring something in line with the characters or in line with what he wants to see. And so he just gives them a freedom to do that rather than kind of putting a cage down a character and letting the actor only pace around that cage. If he hadn't letting the actors uh, be more free and create more life, it you, you would have felt the structure of it, and then it wouldn't have worked as well. He's very patient, <laughs> um, and he's very precise in his sort of freedom style, I think. I believe I possess some qualifications, and that I'm rather unscrupulous. I know all about your qualifications, and they're excellent. I feel that he's putting himself into those uh, women 
characters and uh, I feel that it it makes the characters so legitimate and so true and uh, the fact that he's a man it's even better I had just made a movie called uh, Lawless and found that I really liked a, that certain kind of energy. There's a certain kind of director, a uh, certain kind of approach. Uh, and, and there's only maybe 20 of these guys in the world and five at the tippy top of the mountain, Lars being at the tippy top of the mountain. Being an actor, a male, there would, you know, there's not a whole lot of opportunity in Lars's films for men. Uh, it's actually the opposite. And he's one of the only guys like that, you know? So it wasn't even on my list of dreams, you know? It was one of those things that's so way out there you don't even dream about it. You see that this, this story in itself is so strong that it actually works. And then you have actors that, that bring life to it and that I'm not trying to do great performances just to bring life to it. It doesn't feel like work to me because it feels like you, you start playing with the material and see what, what can be in it. And you have no responsibility. Uh, as an actor, you don't have to come and deliver something specific because uh, the process of shooting with Lars is the process of discovering. But I trusted Lars implicitly because his worst shit is better than my best dreams of my best shit. And if you can find a guy who you can implicitly trust, uh, then you're very fortunate in the actor seat, you know? He won't stop until he has that exact millisecond. But he won't tell you how to get to the millisecond. Um, it's sort of you to discover that. Beethoven, man. He was certainly very good, but you know, he couldn't ride a fuge. You think so? Well, yeah, I think so. He's constantly moving around in his ways of, of, of working as well to, to find not only the ultimate way to work for each story, but also to develop his own, his own means. After giving away his tools for many years, he's now bringing them back in. Uh, but now, without uh, constraining the actors, which is great. A lot of it struck me. Now, having just watched the movie, all of it clicks hard, you know, but at the time, it didn't, none of it made sense. This film is everything that he come up with in his mind. It's just like he's, you, he's painted a canvas with his brain. <laughs> Whatever association he has and ideas he has, he just threw in there. There's this list of rules that you have to make a movie, and he never follows them. <laughs> you know? He's one of the only dudes who's actually inventing things. He's an inventor. What can I say? It's just very scary and exciting and, yeah, exhilarating at the same time. And that's what I felt when I saw the film. Uh, I guess the reputation would be that of a rebel or like a, a fucking bank robber. He's like Billy the Kid in the director's community. You know, he's the one guy who can get away with whatever he wants uh, because it's good. It's an interesting journey. 